Tesla's battery partner and supplier Panasonic recently revealed some interesting details about how they hope to increase the energy density in the future of their batteries by around 20%, some new details there. And in addition, Panasonic also um, has chosen a US location for their battery factory, which from what I can tell, will build the new 4680 format batteries that Panasonic has been testing on their pilot lines in Japan. Let's dive into all the new details and discuss why this is such a big deal for Tesla. I'm John and welcome to CleanerWatt. In July of 2020, Reuters reported that Panasonic was aiming to, quote, boost energy density of 2170 battery cells it supplies to Tesla by 20% in five years. But in that article, beside just the uh, basic timeline in five years that they mentioned in 2020, there really were no details about how they hope to do this. Now, obviously, when Panasonic talks about a 20% gain, they're not talking about a gain instantly. It's kind of a gradual increase as they tweak the battery chemistry. And since 2020, it appears like Panasonic and Tesla have already increased the energy density of their battery cells by um, at least 5%, which led to the Model 3 and the Model Y getting a range boost uh, later on in 2020. And compared to what the Model Y and the Model 3 range was like just a few years ago, it has increased quite a bit. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison from fueleconomy.gov. And as you can see in 2020, the long range all-wheel drive Model 3 had an EPA rated range of 322 miles. That increased to 353 miles in 2021. And now in 2022, that is now 358 miles of EPA rated range. The Tesla Model Y also received a range boost. And as you can see in 2020, the long range all-wheel drive Tesla Model Y had an EPA rated range of 316 miles. It improved to 326 miles in 2021. And now here in 2022, it has gone up to 330 miles of EPA rated range for the long range all wheel drive version. In that previous Reuters article that we mentioned that came out in 2020, that first announced uh, the 20% gain that Panasonic was hoping to achieve, they mentioned a date of in five years. And so we're obviously not five years past that date yet. Um, but recently, on July 13th, Reuters put out a new article with a lot more details about how Panasonic hopes to achieve this gain. And it's even possible that these gains are on top of the gains that we've seen over the last couple of years that I just mentioned. Here's a brief overview and some quotes from this Reuters article. First of all, this article talks about once again how Panasonic wants to increase the battery energy density by a fifth or 20% by 2030. Notice that there is a new timeline there. In 2020, they mentioned in five years. Now here we are in 2022 and they're mentioning by 2030. And this does lead me to believe, and it apparently uh, led the author of this article to believe that that is a gain on top of what we've already seen. The author of this article estimates that if this were to happen, this 20% gain, that could add somewhere around 100 kilometers or 62 miles to the Model Y's range with the same size battery pack. Of course, an increase like this would push the long range all wheel drive Model Y range up near 400 miles of range, um, and that would be quite incredible. The author of this article goes on to mention, quote, a 20% boost in energy density would likely translate to an energy density of 900 watt hours per liter for Panasonic's most advanced cell compared to 750 watt hours per liter today. This article did go on to mention that a spokeswoman from Panasonic um, declined to comment on whether this technology would find its way into the 2170 batteries or the 4680 batteries or in both of these batteries. Now, when it comes to the 20% energy density gain number that was mentioned in the 2020 article and also recently in this July 13th article, it's unclear if this 20% gain was um, from 2020 on or if we're talking about a 20% gain from current levels. For instance, here's a chart and I've pulled data from uh, Science Direct, Clean Technica, and also Reuters estimates that we just mentioned in this article. And according to a Science Direct article, the volumetric energy density of Tesla's 2170 battery cells in 2019 was somewhere around 711 watt hours per liter. And according to a Clean Technica article, the gravimetric energy density at that time in 2019 was somewhere around 247 watt hours per kilogram. The July 13th Reuters article mentioned that Panasonic's energy density of their state of the art batteries was somewhere around 750 watt hours per liter right now. And if the gravimetric energy density had a 5% gain from the 2019 levels, that would push it somewhere around 259 watt hours per kilogram, according to my estimates. 
If Tesla is able to achieve a 20% energy density increase off of the 2022 levels, that could push the volumetric energy density, as the Reuters article mentioned, to 900 watt hours per liter in the future. And although this increase doesn't necessarily mean that the gravimetric energy density, the weight energy density ratio would also be a 20% uh, even increase, if that were a 20% increase, that could push the uh, gravimetric energy density at that time over 300 watt hours per kilogram. Now this all sounds fine and good, but how does Panasonic hope to achieve this? What kind of chemistry tweaks are they going to do in order to make this a possibility? Well, this Reuters article actually shares some details on how Panasonic hopes to do that. Once again, this July 13th Reuters article mentions, quote, Panasonic Energy plans to achieve those gains by using a new mix of additives to allow individual cells to run at a higher voltage without damaging the battery's performance. This article goes on to explain higher voltages allow for increased ability to store energy, but even small increases have also tended to drive outsized declines in battery performance. When it comes to the details about how much Tesla hopes to increase the uh, voltage of these battery cells, this article mentions Panasonic's current battery cell for Tesla uses a voltage of 4.2 volts. And Watanabe said a boost of 4.3 or 4.4 volts was possible with a new mix of additives to the electrolyte. Watanabe from Panasonic went on to say, if we can get that to 4.5 or 4.6 volts, I think the whole world view in terms of what's possible for EVs would change. Now, as this article brought up, when you increase the voltage, apparently it uh, leads to some degradation of the battery cell. But Panasonic obviously has a way to counteract that as well. This article goes on to say, quote, Panasonic has also developed ways to prevent what engineers call micro-cracking, small cracks that develop in the positive electrode when a battery is charged and discharged, shortening its useful life. One protective measure includes use of so-called single crystal materials for the battery's positive electrode. Now, when this article refers to the positive electrode of a battery, we're referring to the cathode. So a single crystal cathode material. So like in a nickel-based cell like Tesla's nickel cobalt aluminum battery cell, that NCA chemistry describes what makes up um, the cathode of the battery. So Panasonic's working on these single crystal cathode materials. Now, when it comes to what these uh, single crystal cathode materials really are, I recommend that you check out a video from the Limiting Factor YouTube channel. And I've linked to it in the video description if you'd like to check that out, where Jordan um, from the Limiting Factor really does a great job explaining um, this single crystal cathode and the benefits of that. But really just in short, when it comes to the benefits, a single crystal cathode seems to limit the negative surface reactions on the cathode materials and helps to reduce cracking in the cathode material, which in turn extends the battery life. In addition to the single crystal cathodes that Panasonic is looking into, this article mentions that, quote, in addition, Panasonic is working to replace more of the graphite used in the battery's negative electrodes with silicon-based materials to improve that part of the cell. Once again, this is not the first time that we've heard about Panasonic working to achieve a 20% gain in their batteries, but this is the first time, as far as I know, that Panasonic revealed these kind of details about how they hope to get there. This is of course huge if Panasonic is able to do this kind of gain over the years. And I sure hope this finds its way into the 4680 battery technology as well. With that being said, let's go ahead and move over to the next uh, thing that I wanna cover. And that is Panasonic's announcement of their US based battery factory choosing that location. According to this Nikki Asia article quote, Panasonic Holdings will invest several billion dollars in a second US electric vehicle battery factory in Kansas to supply a new high capacity battery for Tesla. From what I can tell, because this article mentions uh, the new Panasonic high capacity uh, battery for Tesla, I'm pretty sure this is referring to their 4680 battery that they're currently um, building in a pilot line in Japan. And as I mentioned in a previous video, and as this article once again mentions, quote, it referring to Panasonic plans to install two production lines at a battery component factory in Wakayama Prefecture, Japan in fiscal 2023 and begin manufacturing its new high capacity model, the 4680. This apparently fits into Panasonic's plans, as this article mentions, to triple or quadruple EV battery production by fiscal 2028 from the current level of roughly 50 gigawatt hours per year. 
So in conclusion, as I've mentioned in the past, Tesla needs as many batteries as they can get their hands on. And it's always good news to see, especially Panasonic, one of Tesla's key battery suppliers and key battery partners, to see that they're investing in a new factory and also investing in improving their battery technology. This is great news for Panasonic, and I believe this is great news for Tesla as well. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.